if we really look, it's interesting. The initial response is, of course, I'm committed to being happy, right? It's the obvious thing to say. But if we look at our life, we're really trying to avoid discomfort. It's resistance. It's avoidance. We don't lean into life, but we resist life. And it's that that gets us stuck more than anything else. It's that piece that makes us not live our best self or the best version of ourselves. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. Would you like to experience just a little bit more ease and grace in your life? Hand raised, I know I do, and we're talking about all of the time. Now, if the answer is a yes, yes, then you are in the right place today because today is the perfect day for creating ease and grace, and I have just the expert to deliver it. Rahajari Patel is the author of the book, The Power of Vital Force, which provides us with a framework for getting our energy back and living in a flow state, which basically means ease and grace. In our modern life, so often we have forgotten the key to increasing our energetic capacity. Naturally, energy impacts mindset and moves us towards greater happiness, success, and self-awareness. So when it's gone or it's feeling depleted, we can really feel a decrease in those areas in our life. And because I know how important energy and happiness is to you, One of the biggest events that I'm excited to bring to you later on this month is the Essential Oils Hormone Summit. And most specifically, we will have talks on how to increase your energy naturally. And we are also going to be addressing so many other subjects on women's hormone health. This summit, which is all online, by the way, is a supercharged version of this podcast, which I love. We are going to be covering perimenopause, menopause, insomnia, anxiety and depression, breast cancer, brain fog, liver and gut support, overcoming trauma, inflammation, stress, and so much more. So much more. Now, if you love this podcast and you love the interviews, you love the information, you love the takeaways, you are absolutely going to love these amazing interviews. And did I mention that this summit is free to listen to? Now, what's so great is that the registration has been open for about a week or so, give or take. And what's been so amazing is we have thousands upon thousands of people already registered for it because that is how excited women are. I still get messages every single day about how last year's summit transformed people's lives. And I'm so excited for it to be a part of your beautiful hormone journey. Now, if you do decide you want to own these beautiful interviews, I think it's like 32 plus interviews for your personal benefit, I want you to know that you are paying that money forward to an amazing cause, helping girls and women have access to reusable menstrual care supplies and reproductive education so that they can stay in school and work and they can thrive. And what I know for sure is that investing in women and girls is one of the best investments we can make together. Now, if you are ready to support your hormones with ease and grace, you can register for free at www.eohormonesummit.com or you can just go to the show notes and click the link there. It's also all over my Instagram and my Facebook, so it's going to be easy to find. I can't wait to be able to support you later on this month. It's going to be the third week of October that this goes live, so you got plenty of time to gear up. And if there's someone in your life that you think would really benefit, share the love, pay it forward, let them know about it. Now, I have this incredible community that we made up from last year's Hormone Summit. It's about 10,000 women who are supporting each other every single day with suggestions, support, and recommendations. And this community is very active and amazing. And you will gain access to this beautiful Facebook group as well. There's something to be said about having a community of women who are either going through the same stuff or have solutions for things that you're going through literally at your fingertips. Anytime I run an event like this, community is so important to me and having you be a part of that community means the world. So when you do register, please click the link to the Facebook group so you can join our community. I'm going to be in there several times this month doing Facebook lives, all kinds of information. I'm super excited to support you there as well. 
Now, before we jump into this powerful interview with Rashad Hari, I want to take a moment and celebrate your wins. One particular healing rock star is Emily, and I'm excited to shout out her win that she shared on IG Instagram just a couple days ago. Here's what Emily had to say. Thank you, Dr. Marisa. I personally have had some trauma in my life and was told that my health conditions were due to being overweight. I have never been a thinner frame, but I grew up with a life-altering abuse for over 10 years. After counseling and many visits to a specialized doctor, I finally came to the realization that the problems were deep within me. I've only found two to three health practitioners in my area that have done more than just treat me with medications, and they have helped me to find you. Listening to your podcast has given me a new hope that I'm not alone in my suffering. I chose a carrier in healthcare that allows me to support women that have gone through trauma and pain. I refer them to your podcast constantly and thank you for not giving up on your listeners' stories. Keep up the good, good work that you are doing. Thank you. Well, Emily, I just want to take a moment and say thank you so much for sharing your vulnerable story. I know that trauma can be so hard. I've been there and I know that trauma has manifested in disease for me. And oftentimes doctors don't have a lot of answers for that. So not only am I grateful that you kept digging, but that you are also helping women in your life who you know are going through the same thing. It's through the communities that we create where we really transform the lives of the people that we love. So I want to say congratulations on your next step in this beautiful healing journey. And I'm so happy to be able to shout you out today, not only for your bravery, but your courage. And I'm holding space for your continued healing miracles. Now, if you're listening, Emily, I would love to gift you a signed copy of my Essential Oils Hormone Solution book. Maybe you have it. And if you do, you can gift it to another friend. Just reach out to me on Facebook or where we connected on Instagram at Dr. Marisa, and we will get it out to you ASAP. Thank you, hun. Now, if you are listening, number one, welcome to this episode. This podcast is all about empowerment. And if there has been an episode, which goodness knows we have over a hundred, if they've helped you in any way, I would love to shout you out too. You can reach out to me via Instagram, Facebook, or simply review this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you love to plug into. I am so excited to be celebrating over 300 reviews on iTunes. I'll tell you what, it's the gold standard and it's where people look. So anytime you decide you want to review there, it just it just encourages more women to check it out. And that's what this is all about. Even though we may not owe each other, we're still creating a community and we're able to support more women to become the CEO of their health. Now, let's dive into this incredible interview with Rasha Hari. And before we do, I want to sing her praises. Rasha Hari Patel is a highly sought after self-awareness coach, trainer, and speaker. Through insight, intuition, and meditation techniques, she guides decision makers and leaders to identify what's working and what's not working in their personal and professional lives. She has conducted programs in over 35 different countries at organizations like NBC, IBM, LinkedIn, the World Bank, Harvard, Morgan Stanley, and Shell Oil. She has a new book out, which we're going to be talking about today. I'm so, so excited. The Power of Vital Force. Let's bring her on. Welcome to the Essentially You podcast, Rajri Patel. How are you doing today? I'm very well. Thank you. A little hot in Boston where I am currently. I bet it is. You know, that Boston, it goes, I feel like it goes one direction or the other direction. A lot <laughs> it's of time true. In Boston. <laughs> no, I actually came in because I have a big talk at Northeastern University and I just arrived yesterday. Haven't been here for years, to, to be honest. Oh, wonderful. Well, congratulations on that. Well, I'm so happy to talk with you today. One, I'm so excited about your book coming out. But what we're going to specifically jump into is finding the vital force for work and life. And I know that so many of us are looking to tap into that that vitality, that energy for not only work, but for living our best life. So I want to just start by just getting to know you and talk a little bit about or have you share with us just a little bit about your journey. How did you step into this? What inspired you to write this book? (laughs) Well, how I stepped into it, I think, is uh, 
the hand of the universe interfered. I had just moved from New York to Los Angeles back in 1989. And I was a federal prosecutor at the time. And I just was looking to sort of meet people and socialize. And I saw a sign that said, Pandit Ravi Shankar. And I don't know if your listeners know or if you know, but Ravi Shankar was a famous sitar player at the time in India. And so I thought I was going to a music concert, a sitar concert. I got there. And when I arrived, I realized, oops, common name, wrong person. It turned out to be a spiritual master, a Vedanta proponent from India named Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. And because of that, as I said, hand of the universe or mistake, I ended up suddenly being exposed to the inner world of mind and emotions and human potentiality so that we could live our best self. And and again, I was this super left brain lawyer, you know, nothing would have registered for me and I would have boo-pooed all this stuff, but I was there and I thought, okay, I'm I've been brought here. I'm going to stay curious. Let's see what happens. And that transformed my life. Nine hours later, when I arrived into the office Monday morning, I was suddenly processing my files in quarter of the time. It's crazy. If it took me four hours to put a case together, analyze, and, and all that stuff, I was getting it done in one hour. And bigger than that was the yada yada, the noise in my head about how I look, what is this like, what is someone thinking, did I say the right thing, oh my God, I made a mistake, all that noise that goes on in the head while you're presenting a case or while you're doing anything for that matter suddenly had quieted down and I found I was more present, more alert, and the better version of me had shown up. So. That's kind of what started my journey. And the book is because for 35 years, I'm traveling all over the world. And at the end of every program, people always say, do you have all this in writing? Do you have a book? Do you have a podcast? And I, between us, I really hate writing. It was like, no, no, I don't want to do writing. I'm good with people, talking to people, sharing with people. But then I had to get over my own kind of resistance and obstacles. And that's what the book writing journey did, in fact. And now it's coming out October 1st, The Power of Vital Force. So here I am with you. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. So this journey started in 89 and it has taken you to here. And in you, I guess all of the work that you've been doing since 89 has has culminated into this, this beautiful project that you've started. That is so incredible. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, let's talk about this because you know what? A lot of people every single day, all of the thoughts that are racing through our head, we were caught up in in the minutia of of our mind and what's going on. Tell me a little bit about what is the mindset that drains our potential? And then once we understand that, what then is the mindset that can actually enhance our potential and fulfillment? Because I think a lot of people would like to be where, where you're at today. So it's a great question. If we just look at our mind, you know, just even going back to the basics before we even get into mindset, we see that it's all day. And unfortunately, sometimes even at night, it's thinking, it's planning, it's strategizing. It is on all the time. And we haven't ever really stopped to reboot or re-energize the mind. We do our cell phone every day, or at least on some regular basis, similarly our computer, but we don't realize that the hard drive called mind, which is constantly thinking, also needs to be reboot or recharged. And we have our basic way of doing it, which is food and sleep and some bit of exercise and water and you know whatever else, the coffee, the sugar, the adrenal response, somehow sacrificing on sleep. We think we can get through our goals and our tasks. But in the long run, we find it doesn't work because what you're really headed towards is a burnout or overwhelmed with stress. So that's the first thing to know is that just like our body, our mind and our emotions, just like our spirit also, runs on what we call vital force, this innate source of energy and intelligence that we're born with. If I talked about kids, young kids or infants, They have enormous amount of power, enormous amount of vital force, and 
there's innate intelligence. They're not drinking coffee. There's no, you know, sugar highs. It's basically mashed carrot and a mashed pea at the age of one or two. Otherwise, it's mother's milk, but they are full of life. And that translates into enthusiasm and energy and excitement and joy and happiness and confidence, all the things we want. So we're really first talking about saying, let's stop the mind hog energy, slow it down. And then number two, to your point, shift our mindset. So obviously, the more optimistic your perception your mindset, the more energy you generate. And the more negative or more complaining the mindset, the more energy you drain. So what do we do, I guess, is the natural question to make sure our mindset is optimistic. And we do a lot of things, all kinds of strategy and mindfulness and meditation and your green juice and exercise and coffee even, right? But we've never really realized that there's a direct relationship between the level of vital force, how full your battery is, and how optimistic, positive, how clear, how centered, how focused, and how well you perform in whatever you do. So it's not even about shifting mindset as much as it is about shifting the level of prana or life force or chi in your system. The more of it you have, the more life you have. I mean, I guess the first question I have is how do we begin? Because I, my gut tells me it's a practice. It took a minute for us to kind of get all caught up in all of our stuff and racing from one thing to the next. I mean, whether we like it or not, there's a practice there too. <laughs> yes. But we got to shift that practice for a different type of practice. And I think that's where we get stuck is how do we even begin to shift from the practice that is unconscious and that we know so well that we've hardwired our neuro, with, literally within neuroplasticity, how do we begin to shift and, and reprogram those neural pathways? This word you just used, neuroplasticity, is the best. To your point, we're hardwired. Like by the time we're seven, we've taken on all our limiting beliefs or the mindsets that make us smaller than our own potentiality. Then we really realize what we're capable of. So yes, okay, we need tiny habits for big results. And there's so much talk out there about meditation and mindfulness and habits. And oftentimes, when we just look at the paraphernalia that goes with those habits and that discipline, we want to give up. You know, I know a lot of people, they say, well, I, I would love to meditate, but I can't because I can't clear my mind. I can't because I don't have the time. I can't because I just can't sit in a particular pose or position. So the one thing that I'm suggesting is, None of that is required. The answer, in a way, the simplest and the first step is right under our nose. And I'm talking about our breathing. It's about neuroplasticity. If we do five discerning pauses in our day, just five two minute or less discerning pauses in our day, what we do is change our perception. To use your words, the hardwiring. We really stop the racing, running monkey mind and get it to a calm state where, where there's synchronicity between left and right brain so that we perform better and also have insight and intuition, which we sometimes call as emotional intelligence. So those five discerning pauses, you know, what are they? And how do we take them? So I want to take the listeners, you know, mind away from, look, I don't have any more time for any more practices. I already do enough. Or I have so much going on on my plate that I wish I could make time for myself, but I can't. So here's a tip that's not going to take any more time, yet it's going to give great results. And that revolves around our breath. And before I get into the tip, I'm sure you know, and, and you've probably talked about it in prior shows. One of the biggest advantage of breathing is that every time we breathe in, we get what we need to juice our entire system, body, mind, breath, emotions, our spirituality, our sexuality, all of it gets juiced through the breath. And most people don't realize it. And inhalation is what does that. And under stress, we do the counterintuitive thing. Our breath gets even shorter or some of us actually don't even breathe. The second thing that happens with the breath is when you breathe out, 
It's your letting go switch. It's how we can release the mental, racy, runny, extraneous thinking. It is how we empty the emotions we don't need. It's true we empty CO2. It's true we get rid of lactic acid from our muscles, like from exercising when we exhale, but we do something else. We also release, we can say, the toxins or the stressful emotions and mindset from our system. And how it works is very simple. It's physiology. When our breath is long, when it's smooth, we move from sympathetic, meaning stress, fear, flight, freeze response, to parasympathetic, rest, calm, relaxation response. That means mental activity, thinking, racy, yada, yada, yada goes down, and there's a calmer, clearer, centered space from which we act. So, The five places where I tell people to do that, with that little bit of understanding, I would say first thing in the morning, as soon as you sit up from bed or stay lying down if you want to hit the snooze button, doesn't matter, do 10 long breath in and out. And I'll I'll explain long in a minute, but really breathe in and out and it does two things. Number one, it starts to energize you. But number two, most people have an incomplete sleep cycle. You know, and I know that a lot of people go to sleep, they're in bed for six or eight hours, but aren't sure where they're sleeping or thinking all night. Or they wake up in the morning and feel more exhausted than when they entered sleep. And why? Because they were thinking, they were processing. So by doing the breathing, we move scientifically, physiologically from a stress response to a calm response. And that means we are shutting down and closing the sleep cycle. It's a way to start your day out right. Because a lot of people have that feeling, right? Where you get up and you feel like, God, I just feel like I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. What could have happened? You're literally saying the truth. Maybe there was a sleep cycle that didn't close. So that's the first thing. It doesn't take time. It's 10 breaths. The only thing I'm asking you to do is make it longer. Second thing, when you arrive to the office, nobody knows you're doing it. As you're getting to the elevator, as you're waiting for the elevator to come down, as you walk to your desk, as you're putting down your computer, do 10 long breaths. Two things are there, long breath. And it's conscious breath. And that kind of brings us into physics and the observer effect. But I'll leave that alone for now. But because by the time we wake up and arrive to the office, we've been thinking what I have to get done, the deadlines, the boss, the traffic. We're getting stressed. And your breath can recenter you. It brings your mind back into the present moment in a calm state. Nobody knows you're doing it so that you make the most of your morning as you arrive into the office. The third place to do it is just before lunch for the obvious reasons, which perhaps everybody knows, but we know that our gut and our brain, our central nervous system are directly connected. We often talk about it from the perspective of like raw intuition or gut feeling. There's a direct connection to the two. And by the time we arrive to the office and have our lunch, we're stressed again. We're starting to think about home and we're worried about all the things we didn't get done and where did the time fly by. And then we sit down to eat. And what we do is we affect our digestion, of course, but we also affect our gut biome, affect the environment in which our biome can either flourish or not. And under stress, it doesn't flourish. It sort of dies down. And we know we're more microbiome than we are human cells. So it's a very, very positive way to start your lunch, your meal. So that's three. Fourth is when you're leaving the office, you're done for the day. Whatever had to be in the office is done. You want to recenter, regroup. As you're walking to the elevator, start that breathing again. By the time you get home, the traffic and all of that requires energy. It's going to need fuel. And I'm saying physiologically, breathing is the number one way to bring in vital force. And then the last time you do it, the fifth time, is just before bed. You're in the bed. You've got your covers on, on your back or side. 
and you do 10 long breath in. How we enter sleep determines the quality of sleep. It takes us out of the first layer thinking mode of sleep and gets us into deep for layers of rest, maybe second, third, or fourth. Because most of the time, we sleep with thinking. You know, what should have been done? I could have, I should have, and they didn't, and they did that, and so on and so forth. So we enter sleep in a deeper layer. Therefore, you wake up more energized in the morning. So these five places, first thing in the morning, as you arrive into the office, just before lunch, as you leave the office, and as you're rolling into rest or sleep. If you do these five pauses, I'm sure you will discover an enormous shift in your outlook, your perception, your mindset, and your energy. It just makes you more optimistic, positive. I love that it's so simple to do as well, you know, because that's just it. Very often, we just don't know where to actually begin. And the breath work, again, I think is it not only as long as we're consistent with that practice, we can have such a powerful experience with that life force that that is innate and connected with us. And we can change, like you said, not only the parasympathetic to parasympathetic tone, but also it's going to just clear our mind in, in the way in which we can actually focus I love, love, love that. And I love that you out came out the gate with with a practice that we can do that's so simple. The two words you used are great, right? Clear your head and bring focus. It's really what we need in this world where we're like so hooked into everything. Imagine we're having a group chat and a text and an email and a conversation in person all at once. We need to somehow calm that down. And, And I think that this is the simplest least time consuming method that yields great results. Mm, I love it. I want to just shift gears a little bit and talk about the difference between acceptance versus resistance and as it relates to thriving in our life. Because so often we we butt up against resistance. I know I even think of acceptance more of even surrender versus resistance. But can you talk about the duality of these two things? Yeah, so this is such a, it's one of my favorite topics, you know, self-help books are filled with how to fix our mind and what to do with it. And interestingly enough, Vedant, the wisdom of India says at the center, at the core of you, your perfection, it doesn't need fixing, you know, you're this beautiful, loving force. And what happens is there's just these two mindset that prevent us from experiencing our own greatness or our own beauty. And that is, to your point, the two mindsets are where you're in resistance, you know, avoiding, I don't like it, I don't want it, it should not be, or getting fixed on how something should be. I want it, the craving, the desire, the running, the feverishness behind something. And so I often ask my audience this question to really think about, and and I'd love for your listeners and for you to just to share between the two of us is, Are you someone in your life who operates, who makes choices, who makes decisions and actions based on, I want to be happy, that's the commitment? Or are you someone in your life who chooses or makes decisions and actions with the idea that I want to be sure nothing unpleasant or uncomfortable or avoiding pain? They sound like the same thing. One is committed to being happy, A. The other is committed to making sure something uncomfortable doesn't happen. And if we really look, it's interesting. The initial response is, of course, I'm committed to being happy, right? It's the obvious thing to say. But if we look at our life, we're really trying to avoid discomfort. It's resistant. It's avoidance. We don't lean into life, but we resist life. And it's that that gets us stuck more than anything else. It's that piece that makes us not live our best self or the best version of ourselves. Because instead of going for it, instead of risking, instead of having the trust and the confidence, because that's what comes with the A commitment, what happens is we're shrinking, right? The moment you say, I'm committed to being happy, you risk differently. You'll go for it differently. Your confidence naturally up-levels itself. And with that, up-levels the prana, the energy you need to execute on that decision. 
if you're busy avoiding, it's kind of like, you know, pushing and using the energy against yourself. You're keeping your potential in. Imagine if someone knocks at your door and you don't want them in, it's so much easier to open the door and say, no, thank you, than to sit there trying to push them away. We use our own energy, our own potentiality against ourselves. So the first thing I would say to people and encourage people to do is lean into life because it's actually the easier road. It's less hard work to go towards something than to fight something because the simple rule is what you resist actually persists. It chases you. You know, The more you try to forget something, the more you remember something. No, it's so true. I absolutely agree with that. So interesting because it's that first step. So if if indeed we're feeling resistance towards something, should we just go against what we believe to be true and just lean into that? In in a sense, it's what we're talking about. Like, okay, accept that there's some resistance. That's natural. But rise above it by choosing to take action anyway, because most of the time it's fear that's stopping us. And there is this notion of acceptance. I don't mean passive acceptance. I'm talking about a dynamic state of acceptance where your mind is at peace, but your body's active. Most of the time we do it the other way around. You'll notice that when we think we're in acceptance, it's actually resistance. The mind is going through a lot of I should have, I would have, I could have, which is active, right? Thinking, thinking, thinking. And you sit still on your sofa and you're under your covers. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure. I'm thinking about it. I'm processing. I'm so confused. You get more confused the more you think about things. And to get out of confusion, one of the best and the fastest thing is leap into action. Accept the confusion. It's there. It doesn't matter. But your body can move separately from whatever it is that's going on in your head. I absolutely get that 100%. And nobody's taught us that. Nobody discusses that. No, oh, absolutely. No one has discussed any of this with us. You know, I mean, not that we haven't maybe read about some of this, but no, this isn't, this wasn't in the handbook growing up. Absolutely not. The last question I wanted to ask was really about speaking about mental hygiene. And I think we've done a little bit, I don't, you know, I know we've talked a little bit about the breath work and how that could lead to mental hygiene even stepping into it at acceptance. But are there other techniques of ensuring that we are clearing the mind and setting ourselves up for success? Absolutely. Look, I think you bring up a a big conversation. We spend every day, twice a day on dental hygiene. It's a few minutes a day, but we do it. We floss, we brush, and we gargle and whatever else we do. And then at least once a day, hopefully, we spend five, 10 minutes on physical hygiene, everything from shower, grooming, you know, combing and so on and so forth. Well, the thing that's driving everything, our mind, our inner landscape, we don't really make a conscious effort to sit down and say, wait a minute, I deserve five minutes of mental hygiene a day. And mental hygiene is nothing more than one, boosting your energy levels, as we said, learning to contemplate, okay, what's really gone on? And oftentimes ending the day by saying, I've done the best I could. This day is over. Tomorrow morning, I begin again. That directly relates to neuroplasticity. So I have a habit that I use every day. I go to sleep. After my breath, I I sort of, my hand naturally goes on my chest and I just say, okay, this day is over, which means this life is over. I get to begin fresh tomorrow and I'll see what happens in the morning. And I really tell myself, and what happens is there's a sense of forgiveness, a sense of ease, a sense of letting go that I've done the best I could gives me the confidence for the morning instead of I didn't and I should have, and they told me to, and I knew better. Okay. Yes, I knew better, but now it's over. That's where acceptance comes in. That is our biggest, really the biggest gusto or the extra edge in life. Self-acceptance for whatever's happened at the end of the day allows the morning to be the morning miracle, you know, okay. And then I get up in the morning, I do my 10 breath and I say to myself, all right, it's a new day, a new beginning, and 
anything is possible. It's a literal sentence I either sometimes say out loud or I say in my head, and that changes my energy, my outlook. I love it. That's so powerful. Can you tell me a little bit about, I always love to know how, how a book is structured, like what is in the power of the Vital Force book, um, kind of what was, what was the way that you thought about creating it, and what can we get out of it when we, when, we, when we grab this book for the first time? It's a very practical book. It begins with just a little story about myself, you know, my story and, and the reader's journey, but then chapter one leaps right into a very simple fact that everything is energy. Everything requires energy, and the more life we want, the more energy we need. And it guides the reader from there to tips and tools and techniques on where and how we can harness energy. It also points the reader to what drains energy. We, we mentioned it briefly. Our mind, our biggest energy hog is our mind, our thinking, our frontal cortex. And I really get into awareness for the reader about how their mind and where they're stuck. It points to self-talk exercises so we can really see, oh my God, my mind is really stuck in the past, something I cannot change, or it's really stuck in the future, something that may or may not happen through the analogy of an iceberg, how the most powerful part of the iceberg is not what we see, the frontal cortex or our thinking brain metaphorically, it's the base of the iceberg, what we don't see. It's the limbic brain, the unconscious mind, and how that is sending messages up to the top of the iceberg, making us choose things that we know are not necessarily what we want or are good for us. So the book moves into what drains energy. And then I start to give really tools and tips on what enhances energy, including practice like gratitude. There's five principles to practice or qualities for oneself and five principles or qualities to practice as it relates to another. And there are things like the sense of non-stealing, non-resistance, the mindsets that hold us back and how every day, once a day, at the end of the day for 30 seconds or less, I, less I invite the reader to practice through neuroplasticity change and really awaken the quality that we're born with, you know, the joy, the love, the laughter, the acceptance, the peace, and from there leap into greater success to do more. Hmm, that is powerful. I love it. And I know that if we go and grab the book, you have a wonderful little bonus. And that is, I'm just looking really quickly, it's basically an online kind of energy course to focus your mind. Is that correct? Oh my God, thank you. Yeah, thank you for reminding. It's mm -hmm. an 11-session online course, Mind Your Energy. It's uh, valued at $525. If you order pre-order the book before October 1st, I actually guide you through specific tools and techniques with a little understanding of how it works and then invite the person to go through it. And they will see at the end of 11 days, actually at the end of the first or the second practice, they'll see, wow, I really have a different perspective. Wow, I manage my day differently. Wow, I'm more efficient at getting things done than I used to be. So it's a, an incredible value. And I think the book, along with that online course, will really give tools that are lifelong. You know, you can use them throughout your life. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, I think these are tools that we want to be using for many, many years to come. I think it's where we're all striving to get to. I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. And I loved the takeaways. I loved the action. You made it feel so easy. Thank you so much for finally putting onto paper the work that you've been doing for you know, a day <laughs> or two. <laughs> I know that can thank, be thank you. challenging in its own right. So thank you for that. Thank you, actually. Thank you for having me as a guest. And I want to thank all the listeners for their attention. And I really encourage them to just, just try the breath. Two-minute pause five times a day and see what happens. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's no surprise that energy naturally impacts mindset and moves us towards greater happiness and self-awareness. The higher that energy force we have inside of us, the higher our positivity, the higher we are just enjoying and loving life. And guess what? We all deserve to live a life that we love. 
We not only level up our physical well-being, but we level up our mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being when we feel good, when we feel energized. What I love so much about this book is that it gives you the power with simple tools to take a hold of that limitless energy, life itself, and also not only that, but to do it swiftly and easier than you thought possible. I think that Rashahari, what she brings to the table is ease and grace. And that's what she's been educating on for many, many years now. So I want you to invite you, if you were loving her beautiful words, if you were feeling inspired by her message and her flow, I want you to go check out her book, The Power of Life Force. We will absolutely have the link in the show notes heading on to Amazon. It is just came out, so I'm super excited for her. The link in the show notes will be for episode 130. You can just head over to my website at drmarisa.com slash podcast and find it there. And I want to say thank you so much for stopping by and listening in on the Essentially You podcast. On the next episode, I am bringing back Sherry Salata, the former executive producer of The Oprah Winfrey Show and co-president of OWN. We're going to be talking about her incredible book that even Brene Brown and Elizabeth Gilbert have been recommending, The Beautiful No. And let me tell you, it's amazing. Now, here's a small taste of what Sherry is going to bring to the table. What happens when you realize you've had a career of your dreams, but you don't have the life of your dreams? This was the stark facing reality of Sherry Salata when she left her 25-year stint at the Oprah Winfrey Show, Harper Studios, and OWN Network. She has dedicated decades to her dream job and loved almost every moment of it, but has left the rest of her life gathering dust on the shelf. Now she has rediscovered what this new life looks like, and she is going to share with you the possibility of creating a beautiful life at any point in life, but especially in the moment of midlife. So if you were excited about this interview with Sherry Salata, which let me tell you, I cannot wait, then I will see you next week. And until then, have an amazing ease and grace kind of day. 